Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at the time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, all three readings today talk about changes and transfiguration in one form or another. So what exactly is transfiguration? Well, a simplistic definition is that it's a change in appearance. And most people associate a change in appearance with an outward change, an exterior change. And that change can be immediate, it can be seen immediately, or it can take some time for the change to be noticed. For example, last month, my wife, she went to the hair salon. When she left, her hair was light brown. <laughs> Three hours later, when she returned, her hair was jet black. And believe me, I noticed the change immediately. And she still laughs about my reaction, because when she walked through the door, I jumped out of the couch and I says, Lady, I don't know who you are, but my wife's coming home for you. <laughs> you better leave. And then she started talking, and I said, Honey, is that you? Yeah. Now, some changes, though, take some time to notice. A few years ago, when we were living upstairs, I went out one morning to get the newspaper, and the strangest thing, there were three caterpillars going up our stairway. And all the time we lived there, and I went out to plant flowers or till the soil, I'd maybe see one or two caterpillars the whole time. But to see three in a row coming up my stairway, it was like some science fiction movie, what's going on? Well, they went all the way up the stairs, to the landing, crawled up the wall, went to the overhang, spun something, and they were just hanging there, upside down. I was kind of mesmerized at what was going on. <coughs> I came back later the day, and it all had formed a hard shell around all three of them. Every day I'd come out to get the newspaper, and I'd look, and there they were, all motionless, just hanging there. After about two weeks, I went out, and I noticed two of the cocoons were empty. One, there was movement inside, so I just watched to see what was going to happen. And the cocoon opened, and what had been a caterpillar two weeks ago, now changed into this beautiful butterfly. It's quite amazing. Now, Change can also be internal. It can be an internal change. When I was growing up, I played Little League every summer. There was a kid on our team, Mike Adams. Paul Lanky left in at first base. Not only the best player on our team, but the best player in the league. He could hit anything that was thrown even close to him. But one day, my dad came home, set me down. He said, Mike and some of his buddies 
been playing in an old burnout house, and the chimney fell down and killed him. And his father, big guy, six foot five, he'd always been there at the practices and at the games, joking with us kids and, and with the fathers. But after that, I'd see Mr. Adams. And he'd be walking around the town, and he'd walk slow, and he was kind of hunched over, and there was this sad look on his face. My dad said that his spirit had been broken to the light inside of him had just gone out. And even right now, all these years later, when I think about it, Mike, the change comes over me inside. I, I feel a deep sadness for my good friend that I knew for five years. In the first reading today, God tells Abraham that a dramatic change is going to come over him also. God tells him that in his advanced age, he and his wife are going to have children. Well, Abraham is more than skeptical about this. You see, Abraham and his wife are nearly 100 years old, and she's barren. But God tells him that he, Abraham, is going to be the patriarch of a great nation, that his descendants will be as vast as the stars in the sky. And even today, his descendants are affecting and changing world history. <laughs> In the New Testament reading, what we have is just a small segment of a letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. And in the reading, you hear towards the last, where Paul says to the people, stand firm in the ways of the Lord. And he goes on to say, your salvation is not in obedience to earthly laws, but to have faith in Jesus Christ. So now why is Paul telling them this? What's, what's going on? We well, see at that time, Peter is the head of the new Christian church in Jerusalem. Some people will even say he was the first pope. Peter was the first pope. What Peter and his followers want, they want the new Gentile converts to adhere to the old Jewish law of circumcision and eating only certain foods. Paul, he tells them, stand firm in the ways of the Lord. I'm going to make this right. I'm going to go to Jerusalem and talk to Peter about this. And that's what Paul does. He and Peter, they have their little conference. And he says, look, Peter. He says, the Christian church is now becoming a universal church for everyone. Christ died for all mankind, not just for the Jews. And Peter thank goodness for all of us Christians, listened to Paul's argument, and he said, yes, I, I know you're right. So the Gentiles continued to convert, and they didn't have to worry about those old, antiquated Jewish laws. And the gospel reading today is a story that most all of us are familiar with. Jesus takes three of his disciples up to the mountaintop. And while there, right in front of them, he transfigures himself to his divine self. And while they are all in this cloud, and Jesus is transfigured, you hear a voice from the cloud, God the Father, saying, This is my Son. Listen to him. <coughs> And this is a mandate that all of us Christians should follow. Many times when we have challenges in our lives, no matter how great or how small, before we act on those, we should pause, step back a little bit, and do what God the Father says. Listen to Him. Listen to what He is telling us. The Eucharist 
that is the time that we are closest to Jesus. After we come up today and receive his body and blood, when we go back to our seats, we should maybe take a moment and pause. Try to purge ourselves of any earthly thoughts and just sit there and hear what he is whispering, the message he is giving to us. Now, in a few moments, we will hear the words, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And when we go and leave this church to our trials of day-to-day -day living, let's remember that we too have been to the mountain and seeing the love of our God, who made visible through his son the transfiguration that we celebrate here.